Hello and welcome to the series of Getting Started with Atomic Scope. This is the Atomic Scope website's portal and as you can see the first step is to activate the license. We would recommend you purchase a commercial license or get a trial key for using Atomic Scope. Once you have activated the license, the next step is to add your resources. At this point, you can add either a BizTalk environment or an Azure resource group. I will add my local BizTalk as one of the resources. Then you need to add a workspace, which is a logical container that encompasses both BizTalk servers and Azure subscriptions. Over here, we can associate any of the available resources. I'm going to associate my local BizTalk environment. Once you have set up your workspace, then you can go ahead and set up your business processes. When you install Atomic Scope, we have already provided a few SDK samples for you to start off with. We will import these into Atomic Scope. And now we can see some of these business processes in our portal. If I click on any of these business processes, we can then see the various transactions within that process. Single orchestration scenario is one such transaction. And within this transaction, we have a number of stages. These are the various search properties and tracking properties that Atomic Scope will retrieve. You can see that these can either be a BizTalk context or an XPath value. Further, we also support complex XPath values as shown over here. Let's now add a search property. So now that we have configured the business processes, let us now see how these business process transactions and stages are used in the BizTalk artifacts. Here we are in the BizTalk administration console and you can see the Atomic Scope samples application has been deployed. We have a number of receive locations over here and here we can see the properties of these receive locations. As you can see, Atomic Scope pipelines are being used and the business process, business transaction and stage name has already been configured. In the samples folder, you will find some test locations for performing testing. So now when we refresh the screen, we can see that certain messages have gone through successfully while some have failed. So if I click on this message over here, I can view the transaction data, the track data and the stage details. For this, I would need to click on one of the stages. So since I have clicked on the error stage, I can see the status is failure and I can also see various archived details such as message body and message context, as well as the exceptions that occurred. So we can see that this is a business exception or if it is perhaps a system exception. Now, what if the functional support team gets a request inquiring about a certain message status? So we would have to search on a specific parameter. Now we can see the state of that specific message ID and inform the colleague about the current state of their message. So far, we saw how we tracked messages in a BizTalk environment. Similarly, we can now see how we can do the same for Logic Apps in a hybrid integration scenario. So here is my Logic App. And if I edit it, here we are in the Logic Apps Designer. You can see that we have custom connectors for Atomic Scope. These are actually Azure functions which will push data to an event hub. 
and our event hub consumer service is going to pull the data from the event hubs and log it into the atomic scope database so this is how you can get an end-to-end -end view of a hybrid integration scenario so in a nutshell putting it all together we collect the data and store it in our own database and then all the activities are viewable to you thanks so much for watching and i hope you found this video helpful